Hey guys and gals, never here from Drake Wing Gaming and Sunny Mountains. What are the gaming dragon today? I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Beast of the Thorns. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. Come on. How can I say I don't trust you? Will you promise not to do anything dangerous? Chris nodded his head vigorously. Well, I'll take a tentative note of it. Not because I'm relieved, but because I trust you. Chris nodded harder. Not at all reassuring. I can sense a hint of weakness in Chris through the resonance. Forget that for now. You do realize you have class this morning, right? I was slightly stunned, as if there was such a, as if there was such a thing. So much has happened lately that my memory of the schedule is rather blurry. It's a common subject. General history of magical creatures. We'll be in class together, and we'll have to leave around 8.30 or so. It's still early. You can hang out there. I can also watch you guys practice from here. Ostrom smiled, his eyes darting toward Chris and back to me. The big dog looked at me with difficulty, his pleading dog eyes fixed on me. He had an irresistible charm even in human form, and now in his dog form it's even more potent. Fine, I'll leave then. Frustrated and extremely reluctant, I said goodbye and left the basement. I casually strolled through the hallways on the first floor and realized that although the fraternity house was quiet, there were, there were actually people moving around. It was just very quiet and low-key. I pushed open the door of a social hall following the faintest sound and found a number of people eating breakfast in a room that had the, that had the casual atmosphere of a morning diner. As I pondered what it, was, what it was about this room that made it so appealing for so many people to gather, I noticed that the magical creatures were all facing the same direction, and there was a television. A huge LCD TV in a classic decor feels, it feels incongruous, and the magical creatures are sitting around on the high-quality sofa eating milk, cere eating milk, milk cereal, which makes you nervous about the brocade surface of the sofa, which must be very difficult to clean from the milk dripping on it. On a high stool in one of the corners sat the unfriendly hyena, Darwin, the vice president of the fraternity, who, though he saw me, turned a blind eye and focused on the TV news. I casually found an empty corner to sit down and see what was happening in the creature world. However, it wasn't any happy news. The ferret anchored reported in a professional tone that humans had passed a new bill. Human states were demanding higher transportation taxes from creatures for interstate food transportation, which sparked widespread discontent among creatures. Most of the Outer Realms are mountainous, lacking suitable areas for farming, so most of the Outer Realms' food is imported from other states. However, interstate highways have long been lacking funds for repairs, so human state governments turned their attention to creatures. What's even worse is that some creatures turn their, dis turn their discontent into action, harassing towns around the Outer Realm. The Vricolicus, the Vricolicus Patriotic Youth Party claimed responsibility for these acts of violence, stating that they were only seeking justice and fairness. Thank you. Mm. <sighs> Humans demanded that the Outer Realm Council hand over these criminals, but the Council has yet to take action. Human governors claimed that if the Outer Realms Council continued to neglect their duties, they would, they would request intervention from the federal police, which would be the first time in 200 years that national law enforcement intervened in Outer Realm state governments. Most creatures seemed indifferent, with one or two even looking approvingly at the destruction caused by the Vir Vircolicus in human towns. Gas stations were hit with Molotov cocktails, several cars were torched, and the doors of the train station were closed with the word freedom spray-painted in red on top. Darwin suddenly picked up the TV remote from the coffee table, forcefully turning off the news and switching to a boring morning soap opera. His, di his, his dictatorial move prompted quiet complaints, but no one dared to defy Darwin. I suddenly felt a strong tap on my shoulder that startled me. I turned my head to Bjorn's big warm face as, big, you know, as Bjorn's big warm face smiled above me. Good morning, Hess. How did you sleep last night? Uh, good morning, Bjorn. Honestly, it was a bit, it was a bit chilly in that, at the fraternity last night. Oh, I forgot how fragile your skin is. We have blankets, too. Don't be shy to ask. I'm not fragile. As much as I'd like to refute it, I do deserve a blanket. Reptile members don't like to don't like to over stay overnight at the Brotherhood house, either. After all, the house was originally built for wolves, so there's not much emphasis on keeping warm in the summer. And everyone used to sleep in each other's arms in one big room, and even the fireplace wasn't installed until a hundred years ago. The fraternity fi fraternity's fireplace is really great. Humans don't really use fireplaces anymore. Burning wood is too much of a hassle. Our new building has central air conditioning, too. Not every building is as old-fashioned as a fraternity house. Do you know what, you know what old buildings all have in common? Bjorn, um, 
uh, uh, lead paint and uh, what is it? Lead paint and uh, asbestos. Bjorn smirked mischievously, probably about to tell a fraternity ghost story. Almost every college has those legends to scare freshmen. However, I've been mistaken for a Dullahan myself, so ghosts and the like don't really scare me. Bjorn tried to furrow his brow and wink to create a spooky atmosphere, but just ended up being funny. As he was saying this, Darwin came over unsatisfied and pounded his fist on the bear's waist. Don't scare the freshmen. I'm already a sophomore in college, strictly speaking, not a freshman anymore, and I've heard so many horror stories that I'm immune to them. The only scary thing about the fraternity is our president. That's true, yes, we both nodded in unison, and Ostrom is indeed a horror in another sense. This is so boring. The Golden Dawn sisters all have dozens of legends. They even have five Annunciation Banshees. What the fuck is an Annunciation Banshee? And we only have one necromantic demon here. It's a hyena in appearance. I'm really sorry about the hyena appearance, but at least I'm the real deal. I'm like a certain brown elf. Bjorn grinned in disbelief while the hyena sighed impatiently, obviously having no luck with the cheeky fake bear. So... How's your dog? I knew he was referring to Chris, but I couldn't figure out why he was so hostile to Chris. I was a little annoyed by his impolite attitude, so I couldn't help but try to irritate him. Mm. <clears throat> Chris is doing fine. With Ostrom's personal training, he should be proficient in hunting soon, right? Ostrom trained him himself. The hyena's voice shows a hint of impatience. Bear, on the other hand, has a look of big trouble. It's okay for seniors to train their juniors, isn't it? Not long ago, they were training in the basement. Like, they were learning how to get into the zone. Zone? The hyena's voice suddenly goes up an octave and diverges. Yeah, it's just zone. Nothing too serious. It's great that he has Ostrom personally teaching him, isn't it? His verbal organization is messed up. Bjorn hastily sidetracked the conversation. Do you have a common subject to, a to attend today? I'll go too. This is the second time you've taken this class, and I and give the professor a break. He's been looking at your face for four years. It could be considered a form of torture. Nonsense! The professor doesn't even know me! Bjorn turned toward me. This is a large lecture. There will probably be over a hundred students in class. Professor Grin doesn't remember everyone, but he doesn't like tardiness. If you're late, he'll remember you, and that can be troublesome. I checked my phone for the time. Still enough time to grab breakfast. Okay, Bjorn. Yeah, have you had breakfast yet? We can eat together. You guys go ahead. I won't accompany you. Darwin intercepted Bjorn's invitation alertly, the bear shutting his mouth with a snap, nodding reluctantly. Mm. You could get both Chris and Amor. It's more fun with more people. Bjorn signaled me to follow him as he pushed open a hidden door disguised as a bookcase, revealing a hallway beyond. Although I've seen Bjorn's expertise in shortcuts before, the hidden door was an eye-opener. While I was struggling with how to recount this complicated passage in a text message to Chris and Amor, we magically walked back to the main hallway on the first floor. Bjorn pushed open an inconspicuous door, revealing a vintage kitchen with a floor paved with red bricks. Just tell them it's the third door on the left, and they'll know. With that said, Bjorn skillfully plucked four cast-iron pans from the wall, heated them on the gas stove, pulled various ingredients in a large bowl of pre-mixed batter from the refrigerator, and began frying the food on the sizzling pans. Frying bacon in one pan and muffin batter in another, he made muffins so thick they were delicious just by looking at them. His bear claws fluttered across the stove like butterflies, shoveling up eggs and with caramelized edges and half-cooked yolks before frying thumb-thin asparagus in the same pan. Hmm. Mm. Yes. Didn't realize there was a kitchen here. It smells so good. I heard the fox before I even saw his silhouette. Amor pushed his way in a little hesitantly to see me sitting on a high, st on a high stool at the center island bar watching Bjorn's cooking skills. Morning, Amor. Uh, Chris didn't come with you? He hesitated behind me, unsure whether to eat first or take a shower. Of course we eat first. He doesn't taste good when it's cold. It was then that Chris poked his head in, embarrassed. I can understand Chris's concern. He seems to have just finished his training, and he's all and he's all wet and smells slightly like a wet dog. But this scent paled in comparison to the aroma of Bjorn's breakfast. Bjorn, still not satisfied, fried bread and olive oil and opened a jar of pickled anchovies. 
Finally, he sautéed walnuts in butter and placed them on top of a vegetable salad. The massive breakfast filled the entire table. Ooh, excuse me. Bjorn, how many people are you making this table for? Huh, just dig in. Would you like some orange juice? Without waiting for Amora's consent, he handed him a glass of orange juice with floaty, frothy milk and mint leaves garnishing the top. Did, when did he prepare this glass? Thank you very much, but don't you think it's a little over the top? The more you talk, the less you eat, so stop talking and start eating. But I... Bjorn interrupted Amora by nonchalantly shoving a plate of muffins drizzled with maple, maple sugar at him. Oh, God. This is... Without waiting for Amora to finish, Bjorn added another ball of strawberry ice cream with cherry decorations to the muffin. Amora leaned his, learned his lesson that if he kept talking, he would continue to be stuffed with food, so he dutifully started eating. This is delicious! Bjorn is really good at frying muffins! I'm not bragging, but my old man can't even make these thick pancakes! Here, have some more! <laughs> Chris's eyes. He added muffins to Chris's plate, and Chris nervously gobbled them down. Although Chris is a big eater, Bjorn just won't stop until he feeds us. The bear's eating is quite normal. Um, he, he probably eats about the same amount as a moor, out of proportion to his majestic physique. I really hope I can soon taste Bjorn's craftsmanship, too. Bjorn's expression suddenly collapsed. I mean, able to stuff me was a big part of the sky falling for him, and he looked at me guiltily. Oh, this, uh, I oh, sucks. Letting you starve is such a disgrace to the family. I'm ashamed of my ancestor's name. Bjorn, I'm not hungry. I can't eat, remember? Bjorn grimaced bitterly. You can use alchemical tinctures, but I can't mix them. It's the first time in my life I've failed to entertain a friend properly, and that's a real shame. You can take the Philosophical Alchemy pr Practicum class. When you have your Philosophical Alchemy license, my friend, you will be able to mix tinctures for Hess. Ostrom laughed as he pushed open the kitchen door. It smells so good, I can smell it from the second floor. Do I get any? Of course! I was worried that no one would come to eat. You should also consider switching to a healthier recipe. Ostrom calmly picked up a plate of bacon-wrapped eggs and added ladles of chickpea paste. Bjorn! Bjorn's handiwork is the best in the fraternity, but this handiwork is a hunter's bane, and members are afraid to seek out Bjorn after a few bites. Chris put his fork down in fear. Why? Hunting is a sport, and to perform well, you need to be on a controlled diet. The more fat you have, the slower the hunter will move. Bjorn cooks without any of that in mind, and yet his cooking is so good. Can you imagine having a bear frying chips in front of you while you're on the, while you're on a controlled diet? Hmm. Alright, y'all, I'm actually going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. I love you all, and I shall see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!